Air, land, and water. The natural systems that sustain us. Our modern life depletes them. But using law, science, and market-based solutions, the Natural Resources Defense Council is helping safeguard the elements of life. You think of the ocean as the blue heart of the planet, the part that makes the world work, drives climate and weather, generates most of the oxygen that we breathe. It drives the water cycles. It's where 97% of the water is. This is our life support system. And unless we really understand it and appreciate it, we're not gonna take care of it. A marine protected area is an underwater park that protects the entire ecosystem within that park. And that ecosystem is like the building block for our healthy coasts and oceans. NRDC's work on marine protected areas has really been a test case in what we do best. The Channel Islands have rich marine life, and so it was a really good place to start. Five years after the Channel Island marine protected areas were put in place, many of the fishing boats were finding larger and more species. One of the big lessons that we learned from the Channel Islands marine reserves is that what's good for nature is good for the economy. We had a mistaken model of how nature works, thinking that young, vigorous animals would reproduce more than those old, fat females. Well, it's the big old mamas that make the difference. Now, around the world, there are more than 4,000 places that are protected. Although it sounds like a lot, it amounts to a fraction of 1% of the ocean as a whole. NRDC is pushing hard to create more marine protected areas because science proves they make oceans healthier, better able to withstand climate change and rising acidity. On land, NRDC is fighting those global threats by creating new ways to do more with less. So energy efficiency is the cheapest, fastest, cleanest way to make a difference quickly. And remember, efficiency is just avoiding waste. Waste is just throwing away money. We use energy every day, whether in our cars, in our homes, offices, for our lighting, for our appliances. How can you get the same services, all those things you want, and use less energy? Just coming on this trip, I have four things in my bag that I have to plug into. Forget all the things that I left in my house. So back in 2005, I noticed all these thin, really cool-looking TVs were out there, becoming bigger and bigger, and nobody knew how much power they used. So being a good NRDC advocate, uh, we went into Circuit City late at night with some power meters. We had a two-minute clip of Shrek and measured the power consumption of these TVs. And lo and behold, many of them use more energy each year than a new refrigerator. So we wanted to better understand how much energy do these TVs use and is there a way to make them more efficient? The way we did that was we set minimum energy efficiency standards in California that will require new TVs to use roughly 50% less power than they do today. Many of the large TV manufacturers and their trade association were really opposed to these standards. Luckily, we found a company called Vizio, which was one of the largest makers of flat panel TVs, and they said, hey, these standards are totally achievable, and it can be done at little to no incremental cost. And NRDC was a, a really good organization to embrace, and, and I use them as a resource. I don't look at them as uh, somebody on the other side of the fence, or on the same side of the fence as I am, and ju we're just helping each other. This is huge. California by itself will save more than a billion dollars a year in the form of lower electric bills and will reduce the need for one large coal-burning power plant. China has overtaken the U.S. as the world's largest global warming polluter. With its experienced staff in Beijing, NRDC advises China's government and business leaders on environmental solutions that sustain economic growth. No one can visit China and not come back with that sort of visceral reaction of how contaminated the air and the water is there. Clean by Design is a program that targets the textile industry, um, and most people don't think much about the uh, environmental impact of the fashion industry. But when you dye and finish fabric, it's a tremendously heavy industry, uh, very heavy use of water, chemicals, and energy. And in fact, there's an expression that you know the color in fashion next season by the color of the rivers in China. 
NRDC in the Clean by Design is working with business. And the reason we're doing that is because in China, it is very hard to get environmental laws implemented and enforced. It's just not happening. So the retail sector actually has more influence on the textile manufacturers who desperately want to sell to Walmart than, in some cases, the government does. But we're also working with the designers because part of this is an education program. Without the NRDC's Clean by Design initiative, Loom State would not be able to have the same kind of leverage that we have in asking our factories to report the kinds of things, measure the kinds of things that we want to know when we make decisions about where we're placing our work. Our 10 best practices are focused on energy and water conservation, like insulating your pipes, finding the leaks, maintaining the steam traps, reusing certain water. A great example is a factory that um, the NRDC worked with that implemented three of the 10 best practices. They spent $72,000 and saved over the course of a year about $800,000, something like 800 tons of water and about 10 tons of coal. One of the best factories we work with is actually in China, called Eskel. You know, with all the cost increases for energy, scarcity of water, being green, reducing carbon footprint, at the same time, actually help us address this cost pressure. It's not just doing good for the environment, but it's actually good for business at the same time. So having NRDC in China, to the extent that we can accelerate solutions as quickly as possible, advance efficiency, reduce pollution, is not only critical to the billion plus people who live there, but it's critical to the rest of us because all of these systems in the end are global. More than ever, the future of our society depends on sustainability and good stewardship. And no organization on the planet is doing more to realize those values than the Natural Resources Defense Council. Truly, the Earth's best defense. <laughs>